Seriously, how do we introduce this next bloke? I've had the pleasure of knowing him over the last few years. He's been a writer, the Australian Weekend uh, magazine. Uh, but to call him a journalist is uh, certainly not enough of an, an introduction uh, for a writer of his significance. Uh, his name is Trent Dalton. We'll talk you through his story. He joins me now live from Brisbane. Thanks for joining us, mate. So great to see you there. Chris, what a pleasure. Thanks for having me on, mate, and devoting your time to Australian fiction, mate. It's such an honour. And to, you know, your supporter journos, mate. I really appreciate it. Well, we'll, we'll go back to the path that you've taken to get where you are now, but let's just, to, to, to bring the oh, yeah. viewers up to speed, you wrote your first novel, published your first novel last year. It's called Boy Swallows Universe. I was lucky enough to go to a, a little launch for it in, uh, in uh, Newtown in Sydney. And yep. It has yep. sold well over 100,000 copies in Australia now, which is ridiculous numbers in this market. It's now been uh, shortlisted for the Miles Franklin Award. You've been picked out as one of the top summer reads by Opera Winfrey's mag uh, magazine uh, in the US. So chalk up a million sales there. And you've signed a deal to turn the whole thing into a major international television series. Is, is that about all that's happened in the last couple of months? Uh, that's about the size of it, mate. That's about the size of it. And my um, my eldest daughter Beth won a very significant award um, from her high, from her primary school. That's that's about it, though. You've covered it all there, mate. Yeah, yeah. Pretty. <laughs> Fantastic. Look, mate. I will. I will. I will wake up tomorrow morning, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna put the butter on the um, you know, on the toast, and I'll I'll bite into a bit of Vegemite, and I'll and I'll wake up, and it'll be all a dream. I'll just you know, and then I'll go. I think I was talking to Chris Kenny last night about this uh, this thing that's happened, but. Uh, no, it feels like a bit of a dream, mate. Well, it's funny. Uh, you say it feels like a bit of a dream. I, I was one of the people who got to read your book very early and I loved it. Uh, spectacular book. I just saw another friend of mine who's from the US, now settled in Australia, uh, posted on Facebook today how much he yeah. loved it. Everybody I know who's read it said they loved uh -huh. it. And one of the things about it is it has this dreamlike quality to it. Your story is the story of a young uh -huh. boy growing up. So it's a very earthy, suburban, yeah. Brisbane, Australian story with crime and uh, misfortune. Uh, so there's that earthiness, but somehow you inject into that always a little bit of magic, a little bit of oh. dreaminess. Oh, mate, that's... Um, you just described Trent Dalton, mate, at, uh, <laughs> at 13. You know, that, that's... Honestly, like, that's, that's where it all came from, Chris. It was like, you know, uh, you know my mum fell in love with the kind of the right guy and the wrong guy, mate. Um, he was a dangerously successful heroin dealer up this way in Brisbane on the outskirts, the western suburbs of Brisbane, and my brothers went along for the ride, mate, and um, that was a part of our lives. And that man that she fell in love with went down for 10 years into Boggo Road Men's Prison. That felt... Uh, that sort of crushed me, you know, and uh, I spent my teenage years hoping that guy would kind of turn up at my doorstep when I was growing up in Housing Commission Bracken Ridge. And... But the thing that always got my brothers and I through, and it's amazing you say that, that dreamlike quality, Chris, is and that it's that magic made. Like we, I don't know why, but my brothers and I felt that magic all growing up. And around us was pretty crazy stuff. I'm talking like alcoholism and drug addiction and violence and people in prison, people you love in prison. But you're sort of ha hanging on to something. And I think, you know, and it's so sweet what you say, mate. It means the world to me um, because... It's from my bloody heart and soul, Chris. Like, I just tore out the heart, mate, and I'd put it in that book. So when you say that and your, your mate likes it and puts it on Facebook and, you know, that's the thing, it goes over to the States and the, the people in the States are reading about these Australian suburbs that are in deer, they're in my DNA, mate. They're like places called Dara and Bracken Ridge, which are like outer suburbs across this beautiful country. There's suburbs like that all through this place. They're reading about the Parramatta about Eels, the mate. World. They're, reading, they're reading about a Brisbane That's boy it. who, for some reason, barracks for the Parramatta Eels. <laughs> they, were, they were absolutely my team until 1987, when a little uh, brilliant outfit named the Brisbane Broncos came, into, <laughs> came onto <laughs> okay. the scene and started beating everybody. So <laughs> I, had to, I had to switch. But, mate, that's it. I just put heart and soul. Ray Price is like, you know... Talk about a dream. I've got a picture of Ray Price that his son-in-law sent me and it's like, here's my father-in-law reading your book and above him are Ray's best and fairest trophies from those days. So can you imagine how strange... 
this all is, Chris. So it's oh, just it's wild. Brilliant. And, like, Ray Price was my old man's favourite, you know, player. So, it's, yeah, it just goes on and on the dream, mate. Well, tell me, look, you're doing a lot of speaking engagements. You're very busy doing other things as well we'll get on to in a moment. But, yeah, tell us about that excitement then <laughs> when you walk down the mall there in Brisbane and you see someone sitting there reading your book or you catch a plane and there are people uh, as you walk down to, to, to oh. put your bag above, uh, they're reading your book. I mean, it must be just exciting every time. Uh, Chris, it's amazing you say that. I was, I was on this carousel, you know, the baggage carousel. I was in Sydney and I was coming down for the Sydney Writers' Festival and this bloke just stopped me at the baggage carousel and I just assumed, oh, he must only know me either from working for... For the Oz, or he must he must also be going to the Sydney Writers Festival, and he goes, "Mate, I love your book. That book, what the hell is that book?" <laughs> and I said, "Thank you so much. Are you, are you on a panel or something at the Writers Festival?" And he goes, "No, I'm an accountant." <laughs> and I just thought that was so great. It's just like it's sort of crossing, and now like I get stopped by tradies, Chris, like bricklayers and uh, blokes in the western suburbs of Brisbane stopping me and just going, "Mate, I read that book," and it's like there's so much in that book for all sort of, you know, every all Australians, really. Like, it's kind of stuff in there for everyone. There's no, there's no person who wouldn't, you know, basically if you were alive in the 1980s in Australia, there's something in it for you, and I think that's what people might be, I don't know, hooking on to. And I, I, started, I start to realise, Chris, that these worlds that I'm talking about aren't that foreign to all of us, you know? Like, we all, we all sort of grew up in the suburbs, right, and then we sort of slowly hope we can move in and just get closer to these cities as our jobs improve or whatever... And I'm really noticing, though, that all through my reading life, I wasn't, you know, that, 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 those suburbs form about, you know, the background for about 80% of us. And yet, uh, you know, I think that those worlds figure in about maybe 20% of literary fiction. And I, that was just something that was always big to me. It's just in Brisbane, you know, like, you know, places like New Farm and West End always got mentioned in the books I was reading at high school and stuff. And I was like... You know, who's, who's going to write about Bracken Ridge? And, you know, I, I just thought, look, uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'll be that guy, you know, and it's like, it's been great. So, like, my great hope is there's some kid out there in Bracken Ridge and he's 14 and, you know, he's, he's, he's in the thick of it, mate. He's just in a mess of stuff. And I hope that kid gets that one message of that book, and this is, uh, you know, I hope people respond to, is that don't ever let the hand you've been dealt be your excuse for being a knucklehead. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's what that book's about. And it's a very strong character trait of Australians that we kind of we have that ability to kind of overcome whatever's been dealt to us and you know and and I mean that's a universal truth for for a lot of people and you know and I I really like that sort of undercurrent of that book that kind of has that in it it's like don't don't let all this stuff you know drugs or whatever don't let that be your excuse for going down a path you shouldn't be going down and that's sort of I don't know I think I wrote that for my kids as much as anyone well Trent to uh... Just tell us about that, though, because you referred to it previously. I mean, while this is a work of fiction, it's strongly based on your own childhood. You grew up in these suburbs. You oh. did have the, the mum hanging out with the criminals. You, you were surrounded by criminals and drugs and crime. Um, just how much of that book yeah. is real? Uh, how, how tough was your, your, your upbringing? Uh, look, Chris, it's, you know, I, I, say, um, I say it's about 60% kind of fact, and my, my beautiful mum, who's kind of really the warrior kind of hero of that piece, like, I kind of wrote it for her as well to say, hey, look, this is why I'm impressed by you, this is why I love you, you know, you, you got through all this stuff, mate. I mean, there's... And and there's 10% of her life in there, Chris. Like, it's... I, I didn't touch the surface about what she went through, and one day she'll let me write a memoir, you know, I hope, I pray, you know, because it needs to be put in, put on to paper, you know, put in ink. But, um, mate, you know, like, um, look... Here's the moment I became a writer. My eldest brother, Joel, tapped me on the shoulder and he goes, Trent, come and have a look at this. And we creep into this guy's house that my mum had fallen in love with in the 80s. We go into his main bedroom and Joel um, opens up this sliding built-in sort of wardrobe door and uh, he gets down on his hands and knees and he, and he puts his hands on the back wall, right? I mean, I know it's, it's what I'm about to tell you sounds ridiculous, but this is kind of the beginnings of where this book came from. And he puts his hands on the back of this built-in wardrobe, right? And and a little sort of compression mechanism pops in and then a wood panel pops out. And it's basically a secret kind of passageway into a secret room that this bloke had uh, built in un underneath his house. That's just out in the western suburbs in Brisbane <laughs> in the 1980s, right? My brother Joel slips his feet in and disappears, just, like, disappears. And um, it blew my mind, Chris. I think I became 
a writer and my imagination opened up in that moment and uh, and and I look into this room and and Joel he's 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 standing on an earth floor and there's like sort of ad hoc brick walls surrounding him and there's one thing in that room and it's a red 1980s rotary dial telephone and that's like that always stayed with me and my brothers and I would talk about we'd, we'd be having beers in my like my you know my 20s and I go do you guys do you guys remember that room with like the red telephone and and Joel, because he's like, you know, he's older at the time. I was only sort of eight around those years or, you know, six, seven, eight. Joel's like 13, 14, 15 in that time. And he could fill us in and tell us, oh, no, that's where this bloke went when, the, you know, he got in a jam and he'd sort of go there as a sort of a safe room. And they'd also, you know, pack some of the drugs, all sorts of stuff inside oh, that good. room. Well, yeah, it's just ben, incredible. That, that got me thinking. Yeah. Trent, just talking about, we just talked through the book there and, uh, and, and, and how, how your personal life, your own upbringing has shaped it all. Uh, the idea now that oh, this yeah. is going to be a major television series. Now, f well, firstly, when, when Oprah Winfrey uh, recommends a book, uh, you, you must be expecting ridiculous amounts of sales. You're probably uh, almost a millionaire as we speak. And, and, and the movie deal, how, how big is this? Who's, who's doing it and when's it going to be produced? And, and, and I, I, I know you've always dabbled in writing screenplays. Are you going to get to actually write the script for this thing? Yeah, great, great questions, each one of those. Um, mate, the most surreal thing, uh, you know, catch up in a fancy Sydney cafe with Joel Edgerton and, uh, wow. you know, he starts telling me about... starts pulling out things from his, uh, his wallet and saying... Uh, Look, mate, look, look who my favourite footy team was when I was a kid, Parramatta Eels. And he shows me a picture of his uh, sky blue Holden Kingswood and it's like a car that he drove when he was a kid. And that's the, that's the very car that the kids drive in that book. And I don't know, I just love that guy. He reminded me of, like, one of my older brothers and, and uh, I was just like this um, kid in a candy store. And he, then he says, look, we think we want to turn this into a TV show and we'll, we'll send it around the world. And... Mate, it's real deal people. It's like, um, it's the people who made The Revenant and uh, Being John Malkovich. And, wow. Uh, so Edgerton, I love both those films. Um, meets, I know, I know. Mate, that's what, that's what I said. And, uh, and so then, uh, so there's Edgerton in kind of Hollywood and then anonymous content um, from the sort of Revenant side of things. And then there's this amazing place called Chapter One. Um, and the last thing, you know, people behind that place did was Howard's End. Um, they work with, some of my heroes, like Kenneth Lonigan, and then here in like in Sydney, um, Troy Lum, you know, who brought us the Water Diviner and all sorts of amazing things. So, but the craziest thing, Chris, is that we've had uh, chats, right? So I go over to London, I'm having these chats with these really important people, and they say, "Look, we think we want to send some writers over to like Bracken Ridge, and like you got to understand, this is where I skated as a kid on a, <laughs> on a skateboard bowl." And they're sending people possibly from Hollywood to come to Bracken Ridge and just, like, make sure we'll get the world right, you know? Yeah, and uh, you can give them a guided tour. This, the thing... I know, I know. That's what my mates keep saying. So I've got, like, all these old mates calling up and saying, mate, we'll give them the guided tour. That's exactly <laughs> right. And we're just like, oh, this is crazy, you know? And so uh, it's surreal. And then, like, you've got to understand, like, my brothers and I, in that mayhem of that kind of 1980s craziness, like, we escaped into pop culture. Like, we... You know, every, a lot of Aussie kids do it, you know. You, you, you escape in, into books, don't you? Like, we all become writers that way. And, uh, you know, you, they take you away from the suburbs. And, and now, you know, we dived into Hollywood pop culture. I'm a child of Spielberg and George Lucas and all those people. And now it's those... It's like my heroes from Hollywood are getting on the phone and going, hey, we want to come to you guys. It's really bizarre. And so it's sort of deeply meaningful to me, that whole full circle kind of thing. And the other crazy full circle thing is that this warrior hero that I'm telling you about, my mum, you know, I kind of wrote that book for her. Her hero was like Oprah Winfrey. And so, you know, I go, hey, you know, mum, look who's like endorsed the book. It's, <laughs> it's Oprah. You know, it's just crazy. It's nuts. So it's, uh, yeah. So, mate, it's, it's one of those things. Like, it's, it, and it's really special. And the, the, the way they talk about this thing, they're like, and the depth of the Australian voice, like these Hollywood people would call and they're going, what is this? What is this? And, and I just go, they go like, what is this voice? You know, they've got these thick American kind of <laughs> LA kind of player kind of accents. Like, what is this? Who is this? And I go, oh, that, it's Queensland. That's just Queensland. <laughs> and it's really funny. And they sort of, so, you know, they want to step into Queensland the way, you know, we step into Scandinavia or something for yeah. some drama series or we step into Mexico. You know what I mean? It's really quite interesting. And so they, they don't see it as, they see it as a world of its own. So they want to, they 
they're literally learning about like what does a medium pace um, cricket ball mean? What does a, what's a Jackie House singlet? What's a wheelie bin? You know, it's like it's just hilarious. Some it's of the conversations, fantastic. So, yeah, mate. It's wild. Uh, I wish you all the success in the world. Not that you need any more, but it's just going brilliantly. I know you're writing a, a second novel now. Good luck with that, and I hope to catch you in Brizzy for a mate. beer at some stage, mate. A pleasure to talk to you. Oh, uh, Chris, can't can't thank you enough, mate, for supporting that book right from the start. It it, uh, it means the world to us all, mate. Thank you. Trent Dalton there, uh, if you hadn't heard of him before, uh, you're going to hear a lot more about him in the months and years to come. A literary sensation, as I just said. If you've been reading his stuff in the Weekend Australian and if you've read that book, Boys Swallows Universe, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Really gifted writer. So much uh, love and joy comes through his writing. So much earthiness too. It's going to be fascinating to watch his rise right around the world.